Hello everyone, this is Vladimir Kramnik I'm on my channel and I think that uh, it's, uh, well, it's time to uh, explain the, this story which started maybe a few months ago and uh, which is not only interesting, I hope, for everyone, but also actually quite educational, I believe, to understand how PR works today, how, you know, uh, how you, everyone, me, every one of us is being, uh, let's say, being uh, moved to a certain opinions or certain views. And uh, also, yeah, just to tell you my side of the story, which shook a bit of the world of chess and maybe still continues to shake it. I will tell you the, uh, well, the true facts. I will argument everything what I tell. I will show you documents, numbers, everything. That would that is a very big difference uh, compared to the other part of the uh, opposition, my opposition, which is mainly working on emotions. And uh, I will um, explain, uh, you know, the methods uh, they use. There is a lot of manipulations, direct lies, uh, insults, and all those uh, usual PR tricks which are used uh, when you need to 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 switch attention of public and to convince them into something uh, which is uh, yeah to, to think uh, in some way uh, you want them to think so uh, let's go one by one i would uh, you know slowly i think uh, i will probably make two or three parts of this serial so today uh, will be the first one, the beginning of the story, and uh, and I will also comment on one of the Hikaru's Nakamura uh, videos immediately after my um, post uh, in the blog, I think, on the Chess.com. Uh, at that time, it was 20th of November. Uh, and uh, then the story started to develop, and uh, I will uh, show you everything. I will show you documents, I will show you... Uh, calculations and uh, miscalculations of uh, some other uh, people in this story and then it's up to you to judge because uh, frankly what I would like everyone and what I am always trying to do and uh, what I would like that I think the world will be a much better place if everyone will follow this strategy which is do not believe uh, blindly anyone anyone uh, listen to both sides of the story, try to um, make a difference between facts, opinions, between reality and manipulation and fake, uh, uh, fake statements, and then collecting all this information, try just to make your own opinion about things. And um, uh, what is the most important that uh, to tell at the very beginning of, of this whole uh, serial, you know, at the very beginning is that I'm working in a different way. You know, I, I don't in this story. This is a very serious story. It's about in general the future of chess online chess. And uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing last half year. I'm uh, fighting with uh, certain forces which seem to have totally different objective than I do and um, uh, I am doing it with numbers, logics, mathematics and common sense. I'm not uh, working on emotions, I don't make these movements, you know, I don't try to look well, to speak like this, you know, guys, I'm, you know, I'm very pleasant uh, man, uh, you know, you, you like me, you see I'm handsome, you know, I, no, sorry, uh, that is not my way of doing it. Uh, also, I don't uh, like to get personal. I don't insult personally, that's also a very big difference compared to my uh, opponents and uh, uh, also I don't lie. I might be mistaken in some things, can be, yeah, everybody can, but I'm not doing it on purpose. I'm not lying on purpose, I'm not manipulating on purpose, yeah, and uh, that is a big difference. So, uh, and my audience you know, uh, whom I address this video and actually everything what I do lately is um, uh, those are the people who 
think, who can analyze, who has critical thinking, uh, who has a certain knowledge of mathematics, who has common sense, and uh, yeah, who like to uh, to have independent thinking. And uh, what I do is I don't try to convince any one of you who is listening to, who is seeing this video. I just present you the true facts, the true numbers, etc. And then it's up to you already to, to decide. But before you make your stand on this issue, you must be informed. You must listen to both sides of the story. And uh, okay, so that was my introduction. Let's go. The story have started, uh, this uh, saga have started uh, on the 20th of November when, okay, you know that actually it started earlier even because I uh, I started to notice, I started to play on Chess.com, Blitz, some title Tuesday sometimes, started to notice some very strange things, strange statistics, which, are, you know, I'm very experienced chess player and I know what what, hap what can happen, what cannot happen. How do people play, etc., uh, etc. Et I have a lot of experience, and uh, so I started to notice. And then, well, I started first, like you know, just just to check. Yeah, I was doing a bit of statistical researches, and then it was getting like more and more puzzling, more and more incredible. I mean, nothing was fitting statistically, mathematically, also common sense. It starts with common sense, then it continues with numbers, yeah? But, uh, like, it was fitting less and less, and, and okay, I understood, uh, and I'm uh, very clearly of this opinion. I mean, I have a very strong stand, and it's not emotional stand. I mean, I have nothing to do in chess anymore. I'm doing for fun. I'm playing chess for fun, but it is based on numbers, statistics, mathematics, that uh, situation is really bad about cheating online at least. And that why I started all this thing, because uh, to be so, to spend so much time, efforts on it, because I believe uh, that uh, chess, integrity of, of chess in general, at the moment online, but probably inevitably offline as well, if it continues this way, is in real danger. That is why I'm doing it, and there is nothing personal against anyone. I mean, uh, if I am showing certain statistics, it's not because a, a pers concrete person has shown these statistics. Let's say in case of Hikaru Nakamura, I would do exactly the same if it would be Alexander Grishuk, Magnus Carlsen, or some international master. It doesn't matter. I mean, what matters is that... Uh, uh, such things should be examined and, uh, well, we cannot just continue uh, as Chesscom is doing, basically ignoring uh, uh, such incredible statistical anom anomalies. And uh, yeah, uh, that is my stand and, and uh, that is why I'm doing what I'm doing. So let's start from the beginning, 20th of November. I, I've published this, exactly this um, text informational it calls uh, some small new piece of statistics recently noticed a player a player had scored 45 and a half out of 46 consecutive three minutes blitz games against approximately 29.50 in average rating actually i think 29.47 uh, so uh, opposition uh, in brackets few different players uh, so it was not against one player, yeah? which is equivalent to 3,600 plus. If I'm uh, not mistaken, it was 3,627 or something, 3,623 performance in those 46 consecutive games. I believe everyone would find this interesting. That's it. So uh, what is the meaning of this? Uh, what what am I, I I'm saying here? Actually, it was just the first post of a serious. Uh, it was like a teaser in a way because later that will be probably a part of the second video. Uh, later, I very few days after I've published actually the full thing, which is it was just the one of many streaks like that. Uh, so it was more like to get interest of people. 
Uh, I'm not mentioning the name. True, you can, if you go dig deep, you can actually find a player who did this. But uh, okay, you know, otherwise you cannot, uh, you, you just cannot uh, publish anything. Yeah, because this is, I mean, so at least I'm trying not to tell the name um, here. Uh, and uh, okay, what, what, what do I publish here? Actually, what I'm publishing here is an open source, true statistics. The, this uh, information is a fact. I don't understand how can you, um, uh, you know, how can you blame someone who is publishing a fact. If I have any streaks like this, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't remember in all my chess career and somebody is publishing it as a fact. It's okay. Of course, it is a fact. How can I tell anything if it, it is a fact? So that is already first. Second. Uh, I tell, okay, informational, I believe everyone would find this interesting. Why? Of course it is, because it is a huge overperformance, actually, which have never seen uh, offline. And uh, so my idea, which, uh, okay, going further, maybe it will be again in the next part, I explain that what I want, that such performances must be checked and must be explained publicly to uh, to other chess players who are playing on the platform, playing for money, by the way. And uh, well, they're having some kind of, I mean, it's like puzzling 3,600 chess comp performance in what is very important, 46 consecutive games. Of course, it can happen in five games, maybe even in 10, even though already 10 is a lot, but 46 is a, is a huge amount of games. Uh, again, I've checked as far as I know, and uh, I'm pretty sure about it, because I've checked absolutely best performances, uh, you know, of all players ever, you know, or, or OTB. Nobody ever had uh, such overperformance. Yeah. So, of course, it is interesting. I mean, I'm not even at the moment in this... Uh, uh, post, I'm telling that there is something uh, like wrong. I'm not even telling that it necessarily is uh, cheating. And I never told this and I still don't tell it. I will explain, I explain many times publicly my position. Um, uh, and I, I, I will explain in, uh, later uh, what do I mean by that. But uh, okay, it is interesting. It is very, very unusual. Let's put it this way. So that is, that was my uh, post um, there and uh, I think uh, exactly next day Hikaru Nakamura yeah that was about Hikaru Nakamura it was his uh, streak again I want to tell that it, if it would be anyone else yeah it, it was nothing personal against him it was just that I, I haven't found anything even close to that uh, with any other player that why okay what can I do if it again it was him, true. I didn't want to tell it, but he came out himself and he said, yeah, I understood it was me. And uh, yeah, so this is... And he started uh, He started uh, uh, all of a sudden some very aggressive, very dirty, uh, actually verbally also campaign. Uh, so the first thing uh, what uh, he tried to do is that he tried to switch it as a direct accusation of him cheating. I mean, I explained you very clearly, and I'm honest with you, it was not meant to be a direct accusation, and it's pretty obvious by that and by my next moves, which I did. But nevertheless, that was a huge full campaign. I will show you, I will prove you that it was a very clear orchestrated campaign to stress that it's a direct accusation against Nakamura. Why? Why doing this, uh, you will ask me. Okay, uh, because that is one of the very, uh, very typical PR tricks, actually, is trying to switch attention, trying to get, uh, to get the discussion away from the point, actually, of the information. The point is, let's discuss if it's realistic, not realistic, if the probability is too low, I mean, what was wrong there? It actually, it, and I can explain it very uh, soon after what I meant, that actually it can, something can be wrong with the opponents also, because 
I mean, maybe they are hugely overrated. Because if the average rating wouldn't be 29.50, but let's say 25.50 Chesscom rating, it would be quite normal. Yeah. So it can also be the problem that the rating is totally artificial and you have to investigate them as well. I don't know. I still don't know. I mean, but uh, it's absolutely obvious to me that if we uh, want online chess to be clean, uh, whoever produces such result, I mean, doesn't matter such uh, clearly low probability. And I will explain you why later, why it's so low, such a low probability performance must be very seriously, uh, must be very seriously checked. I mean, examined and that is obvious. That's all what I want, actually. So. Uh, so let's now, now what I want before starting to tell you this whole story, I want uh, to get to this page. I want you to see this media manipulation, Wikipedia page. I mean, uh, I want to read you that is kind of uh, informational, maybe even educational for some who might not know about it. But of course, there is a whole science of of manipulation. Okay, you can actually it doesn't necessarily mean media manipulation, manipulation in general in modern world, how you are getting manipulated, all of us are getting manipulated. There are a lot of books written on it. It's a it's a serious like science almost already. And uh, okay, Wikipedia page, I want to read you uh, uh, some of it. And uh, then why when you'll be watching this serial, um, uh, you will see how often it's, it exactly reminds this article, how often many, let's say, things which were happening during this uh, period of time uh, were fitting so well that this uh, exact, so, so to say, rules of manipulation. So let's go. Uh, media manipulation refers to orchestrated campaigns. First, remember, orchestrated campaigns in which actors exploit the distinctive features of broadcasting mass communications or digital media platforms to mislead, misinform or create a narrative that advances their interests and agendas. You will see a lot of it uh, in, uh, uh, in today's video and in the following ones. Next, in practice, Media manipulation tactics may, may include the use of the use of rhetorical strategies, including logical fallacies. Uh, uh, there will be a lot of logical fallacies and I will just, you know, uh, reveal it one by one very clearly. I mean, so uh, a little, what is logical fallacy? A fallacy is the use of invalid or otherwise faulty reasoning in the construction of an argument that may appear to be well reasons, reasoned if unnoticed. Very, very important, if unnoticed. So uh, the, uh, the term was introduced in the Western international intellectual tradition, etc., etc. Et so the whole point of this, of logical fallacy, so people or structures, PR agencies which are doing it, they know very well that it's nonsense. But, uh, okay, they, the, the whole point is that people, especially nowadays, are busy, a lot of information comes, so they will not notice the logical fallacy, yeah? And that's why uh, it works. Actually, it works very well. So then, again, uh, in practice, media manipulation tactics may include the use of the use of rhetorical strategies, including logical fallacies, deceptive content like disinformation or you will see a lot of it and propaganda. Okay. Techniques and often uh, involve the suppression of information or points of view by crowding them out by inducing other people or groups of people to stop listening to certain arguments or by simply diverting atten attention elsewhere. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, this case, I will show you step by step, you know, slowly, and you will see that it's like a perfect, uh, perfect case. I mean, actual case of this, uh, uh, of, of this kind of, um, I would say, rules of, of manipulation. 
you will see uh, all of what I uh, uh, read you now, you will see it all in this story. So, uh, uh, in propaganda, in the book, yes, uh, Jack Alul writes that public opinion can only express itself through channels which are provided by the mass media uh, of communication, without which there could be no propaganda. So very important to have a certain channels of, I mean, of uh, bloggers, uh, YouTube channels, which are very, which have a lot of subscribers. So you get to people, you get your uh, information or disinformation to maximum amount of people. Yeah. It is used uh, within public relations, propaganda, marketing, etc. While the objective for each context is quite different, the broad techniques are often similar. Yeah, that's true. And then, and, um, then as illustrated below, many of those modern mass media manipulation methods are types of distraction on the assumption that the public has a limited attention span. Very important sentence. By the way, I would uh, invite you to read it carefully, all this. It's very important, actually, nowadays world to be aware of all that. So, uh, limited attention span. Yeah, that's actually a very, uh, very uh, important issue that, uh, uh, yeah, because actually I will tell you now, I will go through uh, the Hikaru Nakamura explanations and arguments in brackets, and I will... Uh, It'll show you very clearly. I mean, you will have no doubts after that that uh, it only can work if you uh, are actually hurry. If you don't uh, try to to get critical thinking, try to, a little bit at least to question what he's saying, and if you have if you uh, if you have at least a bit of attention, yeah, and then it all falls. But you know, it uh, can sound. Uh, very strange, but actually it works in nowadays world. It works because you can tell almost anything, but you have to tell it confidently. You have to then you include uh, all your machine of uh, PR machine, your channels, some people who start to to write uh, something of the same in the same line. It's all orchestrated, and then you try to create a public opinion. So that is uh, what actually calls, in my times, it was called dirty PR. Now probably just called PR, I don't know, but for me it's still a dirty PR. And uh, so let's go now, what next, uh, I, I will uh, put you the video of Hikaru Nakamura. I think it was done very soon after, after um, my uh, quite innocent, actually, uh, uh, you know, post on on the blog, uh, on my blog, and I will just, you know, point out and explain you, uh, you know, one by one, all the logical fallacies, disinformation, etc., etc. So let's go. This is uh, uh, the interview. No, not this one. Sorry, this one. Okay, it starts already, uh, I don't remember exactly, it was just one or two days after. I mean, I haven't published anything, anything then, only this, uh, you know, those couple of sentences. Uh, so then Hikaru comes and the whole campaign, I can already see the whole campaign starts immediately. Why? Uh, well, I have my opinion about it. Good question. Why, why taking this? So harshly, why immediately trying to manipulate public opinion and to get them to the actually to try to switch the attention from numbers, from pure numbers, to uh, actually to to let's say to try to create an agenda uh, that uh, Grandmaster Vladimir Kramnik accusing Grandmaster Nakamura of cheating. I mean. There is such a very clear campaign, and you will see, I will show you uh, uh, in this uh, serial how often, how much, uh, let's say, efforts were spent to get exactly people to discuss this and not actually discussing those numbers. If I'm wrong, and this is very possible and likely and so on, it's very easy to prove. I mean, uh, again, my position, let's say I'm winning four title Tuesdays in a row. 
uh, with some incredible performance, over performance 300 elo points, then uh, 300 chess combo elo points, uh, then, then my level. But I understand that this is strange. I mean, okay, it doesn't even, I know I'm not cheating, but I know that it's strange. So I, it's completely normal that somebody would ask chess combo, okay, please check check this and i would be myself first one to tell yeah please just come check it because i know i'm not cheating i know that if i was not cheating just come wouldn't find anything so i want actually i want my opponent and my name and so i want it to be clean and clear so i would say yeah definitely yeah let's check let's go go take mathematician check it and publish yeah there is nothing really in it i mean to, to start to create, to become, to make a victim yourself, to create a drama out of it, not even mentioning that actually Hikaru did it himself in past more than once. So that's already, to me, it looks very suspicious. But okay, it's my point of view, so let's go. He's, uh, and I will stop at some point and I will explain you what, what, what is the real situation, not what he is telling. Actually, it is this interview i mean this uh, what he was saying here i had a very very i was very sad actually after that because if in our world nowadays such nonsense i'm sorry i cannot find a better word such nonsense can work i mean because many things he tells just doesn't uh, stand a basic logical intellectual uh, test and this can work and you can build a full campaign, you know, uh, uh, based on such a uh, low, I mean, such a ridiculous foundation. I mean, something is wrong probably in, with our world nowadays. But okay, uh, that was on a general note, so let's go. So he starts and then before playing Title Tuesday, some Title Tuesday, so he, he starts to, to touch this matter. Let's listen to him. So here we go. So first things first, you guys, we of course have this tweet from Jan Pomerschi yesterday, which is okay. a, it's sort of a tweet as a reply to what Kramnik posts on chess.com. And Jan posts because he's the hero Gotham deserves, but not the one it needs right now. So first, first and foremost, um, the tweet yeah. is, was on Kramnik's profile. I don't know if it's still on Kramnik's profile. It I'm is. obviously not going to go there and check, but it says... Um, and let me stop the music as well so we can keep going with this. Um, yeah, so it says, some small new piece of statistics. Mm -hmm. Recently noticed a player had scored 45 and a half out of 46 consecutive three-minute blitz games against approximately 29.50 in average rating opposite a few different players, which is equivalent to 3,600 plus performance in those 46 consecutive games. I believe everyone would find this interesting. Is the, mm -hmm. is the um, audio echoey? Probably not, um, but I'll double check. So, okay. Um, First and foremost, uh, we'll start with Kramnik, then we'll talk about Nepo. That's, that's where mm -hmm. we'll start. So Kramnik basically refers to this piece. He says 45 and a half out of 46 consecutive three-minute blitz games against approximately 29.50 in average rating opposition, which is the equivalent to 3,600 plus performance. So Kramnik basically puts out this insinuation. Now, this can be taken uh, many different First, it's not insinuation. So, so just uh, check now one after another how many manipulations are there. Let's start with the name of, of the of the video vladimir kramnik thinks i cheated of course not i mean he first of all he just cannot even know what i think and i never expressed it so this is the first manipulation the name of the video second manipulation he's he's calling actually open source correct statistics which i mentioned uh, insinuation you see uh, second okay we will one by one we will count I mean, this this is what calls a classical manipulation, classical, and I I'm pretty sure that mm, he was very well informed by PR agencies how to do it, what to say, uh, and he so he starts next day practically as he starts to get into people's mind that instead of discussing for the moment the number now next in this video he's going to discuss the numbers and it's complete nonsense everything what he's saying i will explain you why but first he's starting to get into the people's mind the, the idea that it's insinuation accusation while as you can clearly see if you're unbiased it is simply statistics open source right correct statistics okay let's go further Different ways. If we're being really, really generous, we can say mm -hmm. that Kramnik's just trying to show that there are statistical anomalies. On of course, it's it's not. You don't have to be generous. It is exactly what what is happening. 
online and that's what he's saying i don't yeah. really believe that frankly i mean okay you might believe or not believe that's that's your point but then next you will see now the next he comes quickly to the conclusion that this is definitely the case so he states it as a next very very soon he states this as a fact and here you can clearly see he is saying that it's not a fact it's just what he believes and this is completely wrong by the way i know probably better what i think because as i told you guys a couple of months ago i do know that kramnik has already accused me behind this how do you know no it's not true i mean what do you mean you do know uh, no i never excuse a lie next one a lie just to 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 make it stronger his position yes that's true that uh, mm, many players me including also i know that uh, hikaru statistics online is very very exceptional kind of very low mathematical probability and of course i have my concern like many other players as you will see uh, later on as hikaru himself in some other cases that's normal that's why i believe the chesscom has to publish an official serious mathematical report and then we stop yeah i mean nobody will have any any doubts anymore so but uh, to have doubts when the probability when it's somebody scores 45 and a half out of 46 against a decent position yes everybody would have doubts people would have doubts if i would do it and i fully understand it so that is next so this is he's trying to you see he's building the case i'm pretty sure he made a very good conversation before streaming this video this uh, before making this stream and they probably professionals explained him exactly how should he build his case the only problem that it has very little to do with reality and with the truth scenes of cheating so that is not really in dispute um what is not really in dispute that he knows that i accuse him no this is in dispute this is a lie so you see next step so a chain so what Kramnik puts us out there are a couple things to point out. First of all, it's amazing how you can spin to spin statistics in a way that looks really good for you and tries to make someone look bad. So the casual amateur player who looks well, uh, that is exactly what he himself is going to do next. But I'm not spinning statistics. It is a stat. It is a real statistics actually, and and it's very clear explanation why it is why I took this period because when you are checking for the uh, certain, I mean um probabilities a certain statistical anomalies you cannot take a uh, 10 year statistics it's ridiculous you are finding a certain moments where the highest possible anomaly this is how anti-cheating should work and then even if the, the of course everybody has some anomaly results uh, in minus and in plus yeah but this should if you are playing fair and everyone your opponents also fair your rating your rating opponents rating is correct then whatever a uh, part of the of your performances you take it should always fit into a reasonable statistics yeah it cannot be that like if even if you play ten thousand games that hundred of them in a row consequently i mean just like statistically practically impossible it cannot be so that's why this this is the only method to search for anomalies of course what i'm using and this is the, actually the the only logical way to at least to have a chance to find uh, uh, something which might not necessarily but might be connected with unfair play so that is very obvious uh yeah at this, be like wow 2950 at 2950 an average against 3600 plus yeah. now as everybody knows the online ratings are inflated so for example on chess.com yeah, i believe my this start yeah this is really i mean such a nonsense i mean i'm sorry i mean it's not inflated i mean to start with it's a is not a ratings are just it is a diff it is a chess com rating system by the way, they are using Glico, I will talk about it later, but it's not, they're just different numbers, like FIDE has its own numbers, ELO system, Glico system has different numbers. It's much more mobile, but it doesn't mean it's inflated, it's just like the um, coherence, I mean, uh, relations between numbers still stay more or less the same. 
So it's like two and two and four relation between two and four, and uh, I don't know uh, relation between eight and sixteen is is like two times more. Yeah, anyway. So the relation is the same on the number. So it's not like inflated and doesn't mean anything. No, of course it means it's just a different system. So I've, again, you know, all these small things. You can, I mean, if you just don't switch on your your mind and you just listen to the guy. Oh, he's such a nice guy, great player. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's clever what he says. Actually, if you start to analyze, it's it's nonsense after nonsense. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, go next. Rating is currently 3,300. Am I a 3,300 player? No, of course I'm not a 3,300 player. What do you mean you are not? You are if you have such rating. At the moment you are, of course. At the moment, I mean. As your opponents are 29.50, if they have such rating, what do you mean? What do you mean player? Uh, there is no such thing like a general level of a player in general. I mean, yeah, there is a certain range in between. Let's say Hikaru was like between 3.150 and 3.3 at the time. And okay, it's uh, going up, down, up, down, but it's between this range. So... In general, I would say that in a certain period of time, yeah, you can say you're around 3-2, but now at this moment you are 3-3, so you are 3-3. What, what are you talking about? My rating is 2,800, but there is a lot of inflation, so ratings could be anywhere from 400, 500 point differentials. And it's I don't understand what, what does it mean, inflation. I mean, okay, ELO system has some inflation as well. Glico system on Chess.com also has some inflation, but it's real. It is a mathematical system, what I want to explain. So it works. It should work because it's based on mathematics. Actually shows in all the players who I played against. So, mm -hmm. um, so let's actually just dive right into the into the. Yeah, now it starts. Now the real thing starts because also another very important thing that you have to impress people who actually doesn't uh, have uh, profound knowledge on statistics, mathematics, and who really trust Hikaru. No, Hikaru cannot lie. No, no, he's saint. Um, that you have to impress and, and pretend that you are building something mathematical. So now he's trying to show to show some tables. I mean, uh, okay, I will tell later, but it was such a joke. I mean, it just has nothing to do with mathematics. It's completely wrong from the beginning till the end. And you will understand now. I will explain you very, very, it's obvious. Actually, it's obvious. If you think, if you take a bit of time. So now he's starting to impress, to explain why I'm wrong. And this is a, such a joke. I mean, I will, I will just prove you now. I will not even argument. I will not discuss. I will prove you. And you will see clearly why it's all manipulation. Just a manipulation. Um, uh, or no, let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about, let's just, let's just talk about the Nepo part now first, no, before we get into part, stats. Okay. Cause I actually was bored enough that my, what well, yeah, when we, when we look about. at this, uh -huh. um, I don't know what, what Jan means by Gotham. Now okay. he could obviously about the Jan, possibility story, that when yeah. Jan makes this tweet, he is implying trying to make it where it can be taken as a joke, or he could also be totally the video a little bit later on. So, so mm -hmm. it's very unclear what Jan means by this. It could be, it could be related to Levy. It could be just a quote to the movie, but Jan really should clarify what he's trying to say here uh, rather than trying to uh, Jan and me also, first of all, I clarify, I think Jan also, it's his personal choice. What he's saying, what does he mean? He knows better. Uh, and um, therefore, I mean, it's not up to you to, uh, to tell what he should do or should say. Yeah, that's uh, to start with. You are not uh, his daddy or boss. Try to like be ambiguous and um and and have these innuendos so that that's the first thing um that that mm -hmm. i would say so that's Jan uh Kramnik suite of course it, it, it looks yeah. very impressive on the on the on the surface again mm -hmm. i know what Kramnik is doing with all this stuff he's trying to sow the, the, the seeds of doubt where he's just trying to find, point out all these statistical things based on his stats and um and make it so again the clear manipulation what do you mean his my stats it's not my stats it is stats it, it is a real stats. so he starts to manipulate you see how it develops very cheap actually very cheap but unfortunately in nowadays world especially considering the audience uh, you know uh, quite young sometimes and not having enough education unfortunately it does work uh, sometimes with some but sorry not with me and i hope not with you i hope you have more education and more like critical thinking to understand uh, the price of his words here look like there are all these different things that are anomalies and of course 
Right, they can't all be anomalies, so obviously there's cheating going on. That's what he's doing, very clear. No, no. I mean, I just saying that the anomalies and they should, should be checked and it can be that there is cheating, can be not. It can be there is cheating from one side, from other side. That is clear. I'm not telling this. So he's manipulating again. Yeah, he's trying to convince people that he knows what I tell and he's actually just uh, twisting yeah, the whole point. Okay. Clearly. So... Mm -hmm. let's let's move to my reply now mm -hmm. so this was my reply to the tweet which was vladimir appears to be referencing my record yeah. is he really accusing me of cheating are you jumping on this accusation no no i'm not accusing of cheating and and it's very obvious i'm not so okay that's my answer and it has always been since beginning as well by tweeting this garbage now obviously when i when i say by tweeting this there is no why tweeting why it is garbage it is statistics it is just uh, uh, true statistics why garbage i mean no need for nepo to tweet this out literally no need it's um, his choice so it's very, uh, very hikaru stop thinking you are god or what if he wants to tweet he tweets and it's his right and his choice and my right and my choice to say whatever i say uh, if I'm not breaking law, if I'm not being uh, insulting or, or manipulating, and I'm not. Uh, I wouldn't talk, tell about everyone in this story, but I'm not. So don't please tell me or Nepa what should we do. You are not our daddy. Sorry, not at all. Very unclear what Nepo is trying to say here. As far as Kramnik, though, there's no doubt what he's saying. He's basically, again, he's going to yeah. try to say, oh, it's interesting. Doesn't mean someone's cheating, but it's interesting. But when you do this, again, I would say as far as Kramnik goes, just come out and say what you're trying to say. Stop trying. Okay, again, he's telling me what I should do. I mean, I I'm come out and told exactly what I wanted to tell. So at the beginning, he starts to, at the beginning of this interview, he says that it can be taken like this or like that. Now, already different language. There is no doubt that I mean that Hikaru is cheating, which is total lie and not true, actually. Yeah, and simply it's actually not factually, not, not what I told. So you see, it's switching very quickly. He's switching, I mean, contradicting himself, in fact, okay? And, and, and trying to, he's a boss, yeah, Hikaru is boss. Uh, he's telling what I should tell, how should I tell, and Nepo as well, yeah. Okay, boss, let's continue trying to hide behind oh it's interesting or you I'm know there's this piece that piece and 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 just say it because as an example i would actually rush the aid of somebody else who i know mm -hmm. which is um is jospin now yeah kramnik as it relates to uh jose alcantara martinez the i believe peruvian player i think he has a mexican mm -hmm. flag on his profile but i believe he's from peru mm -hmm. um kramnik very clearly is saying things about jospin saying oh it's just interesting it's just a little bit different again i would yeah. i would say it's, it's not a little bit different he has statistical anomalies the same story exactly i don't say he's cheating i don't know but of course there are reasons to doubt so i want uh, chesscom to get a certain mathematical reports and to examine and that's it exactly the same story so he's again um uh, trying to convince people that it's accusations no as far as Kramnik goes, just come out and say what you mean. Um, That's exactly what I mean. I tell what you mean. I tell what I mean. Uh, what do you want? What more do you want? Don't manipulate. Don't uh, play with my words. I, I tell it. I mean it. And I always meant it. And stop uh, stop manipulating. Now, obviously, like as far as, as far as far as I go, I don't think Jossam is cheating. I'm, I would say that I'm like 99.9% i don't know i really don't know i mean i don't say i don't think anything i mean okay i just want uh, it to be examined because obviously his statistics much less than hikaru's but still yeah uh, uh, it's quite i would say very very it's sometimes low probability okay it can happen but uh, I, I mean whatever yeah that's all what i want is uh, examination of it percent sure that he's not cheating but again Kramnik at the end of the day is putting these things out under the guise of saying it's interesting or it's different yes, or you know sorry. it shouldn't be happening um and it feels I don't say it shouldn't be happening I mean okay it's just low probability it can low probability events can happen but they shouldn't be happening all the time and there are different limits of low probabilities so okay that's it I mean my position is rational logical and uh, there is no no like uh, logical fallacy in my position. There is no f like mistake anywhere. That's all what I mean. So 
Uh, okay. Very much like he's just trying to sow sow the seeds of doubt. That's what's happening at the end of the day. So, uh, you, um, uh, sorry. This is this is just an example. Okay, let's say the last round of championship, uh, uh, British championship. I mean, uh, football. Yeah, and uh, let's say Chelsea play in, play in Arsenal, and Chelsea needs to win seven zero to win Arsenal probably in the like 10th place let's say yeah and Chelsea wins actually 7 zeros at the end of the match and the end of the day and becomes a champion well I mean like you don't accuse you are not sure there was cheating but of course it is such a low probability event that you start to have like doubts you don't know simply it's confusing yeah so that's also what do you mean I I, I start to cause doubts I will explain you later I will show you let's say how unlikely this event and you will see i mean it's extremely unlikely so of course yeah i mean i i tell yeah it's it's very normal to to be like puzzled with it and nothing else nothing more than that the first bit now we are going to move on here mm -hmm. of course i guess if you guys have specific questions i can answer them i do actually have some stats compiled mm -hmm. um which which i will be showing you guys in yeah. a second um let me just yeah Hikaru. better you better that you wouldn't show the stats it's such a joke i don't know who made it for you but uh it's like has nothing to do with mathematics but okay let's let's continue let's see is, is there anything else that i'm missing you guys have any questions mm -hmm. before we move forward there is a ben feingold tweet as well which i'm aware of okay, uh, i think ben's it. a basically zero percent chance yeah, someone that? like jossman for example who's like 2600 gm okay. i mean okay, let's, between these accusations and your insinuations you, uh, hot, yeah i just not not that i i just don't want i want to save time if you want you can listen to this video if you manage to to stay uh you know to keep it till the end uh, but uh, i i will just get back to the get to the main points yeah when he starts to to talk about probability statistics and that is the, <clears throat> that is the really the best fact there, there are a couple of differences first of all mm -hmm. there, there's the obvious difference hans cheated online he ah, yeah, cheated yeah. online yeah yeah that is, that is that is that is interesting yeah and also live asks an important question which so somebody is asking him okay but you were accusing hans Niemann actually after these games and so on and he's, he's explaining why it is different nobody asked him that he accused eric Garcia as well i mean i actually don't call it a uh, accusation he expressed doubts which actually i think it's possible to express doubt but he did the same uh, Rigasi and Samar, some Brazilian player, not not one, more than one. So okay, but now he's telling that why it's so different to uh, to Hans Niemann. Okay, and I will um, tell you my, I will put give you some facts. Which I was also going to get to. Um, what's the difference between these accusations and mm -hmm. your insinuations towards Hans? The fact again, accusations, insinuations. Well, mine, I don't know about Hikaru. I didn't follow so much the story, but mine are not accusations at all so now you see very good typical pr trick so starting that okay it can be that can be now it's already accusation so oh okay no more rest, so it's established by whom why i mean uh typical pr trick okay let's go further there are a couple of differences first of all mm -hmm. there, there's the obvious difference hans cheated online he admitted to cheating online okay. there's a chess.com report which says he cheated in up to 100 games online Full stop. That no, not full stop. Again, a, a new manipulation. Hans admitted that he cheated in past, let's say a few times when he was a kid. There is a report of chess.com where they say that he cheated much more, more than 100 times. He never admitted it. And he actually kind of won the case in a way because they, I mean, he was established. I mean, he's back now to chess.com. They stopped the case. So he, he didn't admit it. It's not a fact that he cheated i mean i really don't know i didn't check the games but but again he's he's you see twisting things and then he presents it as a fact so like it's a fact no that that is not the fact actually i mean this hundred games that is absolutely not the fact okay so we cut and we will catch one after it's difficult to uh, I would say to point out all the manipulations because there are so many in one video, but I will catch the most important ones. That's the first big difference. Mm -hmm. Second big difference, and I'm going to say this again, I reiterate back then, I will reiterate it now, is that mm -hmm. behind the scenes, there are a lot of top players who talk okay. to each other. There are a lot of things that are said, yeah. and that yeah. does not mean that they necessarily see the light of day, um, you know, at, at, at 
they don't see the light of day at the end of the day is what I was about to say, but they don't see the light of day. They say very, um, they say very sort of hidden below the surface mm-hmm. and only spoken about amongst top players generally. So uh, I, w- I will reiterate again that there were a lot of top players who were saying things. At the end of the day, there are people who say, oh, it's me or it's Magnus. As I, as I said back then, and I would say it again, for mm-hmm. two years prior to the events of Singfold Cup, there were people saying things behind the scenes about okay. Punk. Full stop. I'm not going to name names. And, and the- Okay, full stop. Okay, uh, Hikaru. And uh, you're not aware yeah, that it was exactly happening uh, with you. First of all, if people are talking about someone, it doesn't mean you... I mean, uh, doesn't mean that he's cheating necessarily, but uh, Hikaru, uh, everybody knows that uh, all those players uh, also were talking about uh, your performances online, solely online, and and not because they're crazy or paranoid, just because the statistics is uh, like crazy, sometimes crazy, and uh, not they were not like nobody was accusing you of cheating. I mean, but people were like wondering that the statistics, I mean, you know, they wanted to know for sure. They were not sure. I mean, that is true. And uh, if you, I mean, so what is the difference? Why then me, who is just publishing statistics, I'm not, I never accuse you of cheating, just publish statistics and just want examination. Why this case is different to to uh, you? I mean, uh, I think much more directly accusing actually Neiman of cheating as far as I, as I understood, but I'm not sure, or at least raised your your doubts. What is the difference? I mean, at least mine is based on on statistics. Uh, yours was based on some one game, whatever, as I understand. Anyways, so now let's go to another video. After that, uh, there was a video of uh, Eric Hansen, uh, is well, very prominent YouTuber, also strong grandmaster. And uh, he actually says about this whole story that he doesn't believe Hikaru is cheating. No, he thinks everything is okay. Maybe, I, I don't know, simply it's possible that he's clean, maybe not, maybe his opponents, who knows. I just want, uh, uh, I, just, I just clearly know that such anomalies cannot be, uh, cannot be ignored, that's all. Uh, but uh, then he says the following things. He says openly something which actually everybody knows. Okay, here, listen. Interesting, he means he's accusing me of cheating. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, in the last few years, listen. particularly, a lot of professional players have either directly expressed to me that they think Hikaru is cheating, or asked me if I think that Hikaru is cheating. And it's definitely started training a bit more, maybe three, four years ago, maybe the onset of COVID. And this is my stance, and this is what I say to them, is I don't think Yukara was cheating. And I also clarify, do you mean online or over the board? And usually the comments are online. Yeah, exa- I mean, that is true. That's simply true that uh, people are wondering. Uh, strong people are one. I know it also, but okay. I mean, you see, there is another person who is clearly not on my side, or I mean, uh, okay, uh, you know, it's more on Chesscom side, but it's true. It's simply true. So, I mean, it doesn't mean that Hikaru is cheating. No, but I mean, the, the talks are circulating. So, uh, why? What's the difference finally of these stories? I mean, by the way, you can listen to this video. It's very actually logical what he's saying i mean yeah it's uh, also you see a very big difference name hikaru suspected of cheating still a bit too strong but at least he's not telling that uh, you know kramnik tells hikaru is cheating and you will see so many of such uh, head, head headlines in many videos of all kind of chesscom friendly uh, a lot of chesscom friendly channels media that uh, it's like, it's very obvious it was not the case. And and then, or, strangely enough, like a nice orchestra with a professional conductor, they all suddenly, so many headers, Kramnik accused Nakamura is cheating, is, uh, uh, you know, Kramnik blames Nakamura, I mean, all these things, it's like creating, it's a, for me, I have a certain experience, experience, I know people who are working in PR, I know that it's exactly according to the rules of PR campaigns, yeah? So, you see here, he's not a part of it, obviously, because, uh, okay, he's, he's telling what it is, I never accused, of course, Hikaru of cheating. Okay, that's a small point, just to tell the, again, to show you how, 
what is the price of Hikaru's words? Yeah, I mean, but okay, anyways, next. Let's go next. The reason I refuse to actually name the names is mm -hmm. that at the end of the day, when you look at the top players for, for all of us, whether it's myself, whether it's Nepo, whether it's Fabiano, whether it's Levon, whomever it might be, you know, we, we've all been playing the same set of tournaments, the Grand Chess Tour, all these events with each other for many, many years. And at the, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, I very much do feel some sort of camaraderie with these people. And I, I don't really feel like it's right uh, to throw them under, under the bus over this one single issue. Oh, correct. I mean, just only uh, I, in my understanding, in my culture and education, it's not because they're comrades or not comrades. It's just because it is unethical to uh, tell something uh, which is a private conversation without uh, asking the permission of another person. It's not because comrade or even a person whom you don't know. It's just deeply unethical. Just for you, Hikaru. To, to know this basic rule of ethics, yeah? I mean, you are, you are, it's good that you're not doing it, but the reason is actually, in my opinion, it has to be something different, but whatever. No problem, yeah, you're right. You shouldn't do it just because it's unethical. So that's 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 what I'm going to say very clearly to answer your question there okay. about um about the topic because I know there are going to people who are going to say say that they're going to say like okay, well you know that this um that's that's what I want to back. point out uh, mm -hmm. first and foremost I don't know what Jan is trying to say here I don't know I mean okay. I know Jan doesn't yeah, yeah, want okay, data doesn't data yeah well, no, now we get to that very at the nice. end of the day uh -huh. it's it's up to Jan to now the final so, um, thing um this is this is where we're going to start with now we are going to move forward so um let me change the scene of course um and here we go you guys so today. Um, in honor of Vladimir Kramnik, who thinks he's some mm -hmm. sort of expert in data, data and, and... No, I don't think uh, I'm an expert, but I have some experts on my side. But I'm expert enough to understand how, how much of a nonsense is what Hikaru is going to present during the next few minutes. And I will explain you now why. Because you don't need to be an expert. You just have to be a, a person with a basic education and common sense. That's already enough. So you will see and statistics and everything. Today, unfortunately for Kramnik, I am the data scientist, bitch. Oh, yeah, so yeah. let's get right to the data. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Here's the data. So so Kramnik basically looked at 46 of my games, you guys. He looked at 46 games. No, Hikaru, I looked at much, many more games. And actually, you probably, that was the reason why Hikaru quickly jumped on it, because he understood probably, and he knows that there are many more strikes than that. And then just before I publish everything else, he he immediately, you know, he quickly jumped into it just to, to make a campaign before it's too late, before uh, I publish the remaining. I, I Just for your information, with a different probability, that is the lowest probability one, but uh, there are some still many quite low probability things like that. But uh, Hikaru, since I think November, Till now, he had 23 streaks of very low probability, 23. And it was only, as I explained already, it was just a teaser, just one, just to start with. So he immediately jumps, but even one, even this one is actually very low probability, even one, not even talking about all others. So, so okay, that is, uh, okay, Hikaru. Uh, Hikaru data scientist, please give us a lesson of uh, of data science, or real, real data science. And he's basically saying that my stats were an anomaly. Now, of course, Kramnik yeah. did many things wrong. Uh -huh. First and foremost, okay. rather than use our actual ratings, Kramnik used the inflated online ratings to make the performances look... I mean, this is absurd. This is the first episode. And then I will explain why even using the other ratings is also very low probability. But... So now what Hikaru is going to do, I mean, this is a kind of manipulation is, is so cheap. Yeah, He's starting to use, for some reason, feed a classical rating to, uh, to calculate, let's say, uh, probabilities of chess.com online blitz games. I mean, when you actually have not inflated, but a real, just a different system, a real kind of chess.com blitz rating where much more games are played. So it's much more, let's say, um, uh, okay, there is no rating system which is totally, uh, you know, perfect, but it's it's a very uh, normal rating system, Glico system, which is used uh, in many sites, uh, used in, it's mathematically proven. 
and it's much more actually updated so because people play a lot of games so it's extremely like the rating is actually this rating is much more accurate reflecting your strengths at the moment when you play a game than feed the blitz rate even blitz rating because people play much less but classical chess it's a totally different thing i mean you know you cannot compare classical chess and three zero chess i mean that is, uh, by the way, later uh, Hikaru will be talking a lot about this, that I'm just too very good at 3-0, uh, but I mean, and you are yourself comparing with OTB classical chess, I mean, it is such an absurd, no? But even though, he, okay, let's, let's do it, Hikaru, why he's doing it? One reason I will tell you exactly, because the gap between him, rating gap, and his opponents is the, uh, the highest. If you take this parameter so uh, there is much lower gap because uh, was if you take chess com which of course you should take obviously i mean oh, it's just common sense that you should take a real 3-0 rating actual at that moment um, then the gap would be lower so the probability would be even lower even though it's extremely low anyways but let's play hikaru I give it to you. Okay, let's play by your rules, even though it makes no sense. But let's calculate uh, probability on FIDE classical rating. For some reason, probability of blitz online 3 minutes, 3 zero. Okay, I give it to you. Let's go. Out of this world, good. Now, keep in mind, in actual chess, there is nobody whose rating is 2950. Nobody in the entire world, not even not even uh, Magnus Carlsen himself. So, when, when of course, yeah, but I mean, what, what, uh, it's quite obvious, but I mean, it's Chesscom rating, there is FIDE rating, there are different systems, different ratings, it's okay, yeah, I mean, what are you telling? For whom you are telling this? I mean, we are people with a, a bit of intellect, no, we understand that those are different systems, different numbers. Kramnik does that. He's inflating the rating, so he's not using the true true numbers. What do you mean? I mean, I mean, this is a lie, dirty, cheap, cheap lie. Of course, those are true numbers. It's just two different systems. I'm using Chesscom. Now we will together with you, Hikaru, use uh, FIDE if you prefer. Please, if you prefer. But telling that I'm that I'm using wrong numbers is a direct lie, absolutely direct. And you see, it's very cheap, actually very dirty. Because it's so obvious, yeah, that of course I'm not lying. I'm, I'm using co correct numbers. Um, and let's take a look at the real numbers. So here we go. What do you mean real we numbers again? Again, you see manipulation after manipulation, lie after lie. I mean, they're both real. They're just different system, both just come. But okay, let's go to what you call real numbers. So let's say the feeder, even though you should normally, if you play, I mean, use them if you play uh, OTB, but not online, but okay. I mean, it's so dirty, no, you don't find it so cheap and dirty all this. Okay, it's not by far not the last manipulation. I have my stats. These are the mm -hmm. 46 games, by the way, that I played the exact 46 games. I scored 45 and a half out of 46. Okay. Now, first things first, let's look at our opponent's ratings. Now, mm -hmm. my opponent's classical ratings are 2471. 2435, okay. 2332, one game against Anjal, who is Hiram Akobian, 2616. Mm -hmm. We have games against the 2435, games against the 2399, and of course, the last player, the Turkish legend, a kid who I think has great potential, mm -hmm. uh, legend is back one. Okay. So, the average rating of the players is 242198. Mm -hmm. So, when you now see the rating, 2950 is not the average rating. The act no, it is average rating, just on different system. I mean, again, yeah, a lie and manipulation. On this, yeah, on FIDE, okay, 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 don't, just don't tell the time I'm lying. Uh, I mean, and I'm using wrong numbers. No, I'm using right numbers. So, but okay, if you want to use this, I will show you, okay, I will show you live, you know, <laughs> mathem what mathematics is when we will use this. Let's now go, uh, go there, but just please stop manipulating, yeah? Actual true average rating is 24.21. So I am. It's not true. It's FIDE average rating. Chesscom is 29.47, as I mentioned. I'm playing 46 games here against people who, mm -hmm. who are more than 350 points lower rated than I am. So I'm playing people okay. who are 350 points lower rated. That is correct. Yeah. Much less, by the way, by Chesscom points. That's why you took, uh, I mean, absolutely uh, sense, uh, I mean, se uh, senseless FIDE. OTB uh, classical chess rating, but okay, okay, let's now calculate. 
let's go to numbers. I, I'm not the audience which just open their mouth and listen to to what you are saying. I will uh, correct you a couple of times with the uh, with the uh, right numbers. Than I am over the board, mm -hmm. and my expected score, as you can see, is eighty nine point one six percent. So my complete nonsense, completely wrong. Let's go. I will explain you why it is complete. Uh, fake. I mean, this number, it's not true. My score is actually very, very high to begin with in mm -hmm. terms of what I'm expected to score with 89.16, I mean, right? Uh, right. First of all, it's not even 89, but lo lower. But anyway, uh, it's, I mean, this shows any mathematician, anyone who has a bit of knowledge, he can prove you. If you want, ask any mathematician whom you know, any of you, and he will prove you that this is complete nonsense. It's not this. And I will explain you now why. So, you know, I mean, who is who was preparing this thing for you? I'm sure Chesscom. I'm sure something tells me. Okay, I don't know, but something tells. But this is really, it's a kindergarten. I mean, it's totally wrong. Uh, you will listen now. Why exactly? I will explain everything. Mm -hmm. Very very clear cut. You can also see the accuracy. Like my accuracy here. I have a couple of. Accuracy doesn't matter at all here because it's a totally okay. It's another subject. We will come back to it later, but it's not about accuracy. Why? Very simple thing. Because of course, let's say if theoretically somebody cheats in such a, I mean, in such a streak, uh, okay, doesn't mean he, uh, this person he or she would uh, use computer assistance in every single game. Of course not. I mean, then definitely that to choose one or two games when you you had a bad position and won i mean doesn't mean anything at all because of course it's very obvious that nobody is going to use computer all 46 or 100 games yeah so it's actually totally meaningless yeah this whole idea that in this game i was worse and in that game i was lost I mean, yeah, of course, uh, it can happen. I mean, that that means that maybe some other streaks like that were not so long because finally, uh, let's say there were two, three games when probably a person should have lost because he was not using computer. He didn't, but then the other games, maybe, maybe theoretically again, who was using and that's why the streak is like this. So it's not about that. It's about mathematical probability of having such a, uh, a long streak of overperformance, overperformance streak, uh, most important, yeah, not just winning streak, overperformance streak, without any external help in all 46 games. That is the point, yeah. So, uh, because even if you use it once in one move, you are cheating already, yeah. So, it has to be not a single game. So, that's why. Uh, okay, if he was lost in every 46 game, then of course, and then won, then it's another story. But then doesn't matter if, let's say, five of these games, uh, let's say, he was worse or something. It doesn't matter at all. So this is absolutely not really one point here because this whole test is is not about playing uh, accuracy of play. It's about actually purely performance mathematical performance uh, and result uh, so don't hikaru don't mix these two things those are different tests i'm doing also some test on accuracy of play but mixing it is completely wrong but okay good games i've got a 97 i've got a 99 i'm assuming this is probably a really quick one um but on average my accuracy is 88.29 it's quite okay fine. i mean it's still something i mean it's it's good but it's not like nine i think yeah, but your opponents are quite good level. They have 80. But anyway, it's a totally different test. I mean, we can make a second additional test checking the accuracy of these games. But this test is not about accuracy. So quite easy to understand if you have a bit of knowledge of how statistics is done and how such tests are done. But OK, probably it's not the case with Hikaru. 92 to 95 um, mm -hmm. is what you expect if, if we're playing our absolute best. How does he get 3,600? Because he's using my, my rating of 3,300, scoring 45 mm -hmm. and a half out of 46 against 2950 average. So, of course, that's what happened. Of course, I mean, it is. I'm not, I, I, I never told that it was feed the 26, uh, 3,600. It was Chesscom 3,600. About feed the. A performance we will uh, investigate it now at the end of the first part of the interview you will see the feeder number which is also very impressive okay let's go 
There's an error in row 44. Um, oh, 44. Man. What's the what's the error? There's an error. What's the error? Yeah, what's that? I, I don't see the error. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's something. But uh -huh. but anyway, I think you guys get the point. The point is I'm just no. We didn't get the point at all. I mean, we got some point. We got that you're trying to manipulate numbers. I mean, or not you, the people who are preparing you the statistics. But now let's go further. Now the funniest thing starts. Post score 89.16%. Um, opponent error in 44. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're right. There is an error. Okay. You're right. He's 2496. There we go. Okay. okay. So I correct it. So yeah, it goes down or, mm -hmm. or it goes up. Wait, I don't understand that. But anyway, 89.04%. Okay. I, okay. I have no doubt you don't understand it, but okay, let's go now. Yeah. Now the funniest thing starts that he explains such a obvious, I mean, nonsense that, uh, you will see, I mean, it's clear for any, like, uh, you know, children that it's nonsense. Okay. I will, so I will show it you. It was 89.16, right? Or it was okay. 89.16, 89.14, whatever. Mm -hmm. You guys get the point. Um, no. fact is I'm supposed to score 89%. Now what that essentially means that over okay. the course explain of uh, 46 please, yeah. games. Yeah. Explain us. Uh -huh. What does it mean? It means that basically if I were to lose like four or five games in the middle there, that would take my percentage down to like 89%. If I'm not mistaken. George, what are you talking about? Okay. Such a nonsense. Maybe okay. even lower than that. Yeah, um, okay. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. fact is, or w were there some games, probably four or five games in these 46 where I got some big swindles? Absolutely. I mean, it doesn't matter about swindle. Come on, don't switch. What, what, what point do you want to make? Do you understand at least yourself? And in fact, there is one game very specifically against N. Hikar, okay. Let now let's get. I don't. I don't forgot already. Did he so come back to this? Shortly, where I was getting cooked hard and oh, I was completely yeah. lost. Now okay. I was able to swindle it and win. Mm -hmm. But that's what it is, bro. I came for chess. What is this Microsoft ex Microsoft Excel? Well, basically, today I'm trying to show you guys. That I'm a data scientist. I understand mm -hmm. AI. I understand how mm -hmm. computer engines work. And I'm going to be applying for a job at Microsoft in the AI department along with those 700. No, Microsoft you will not get. But Chesscom, I think you're. Yeah, it's very likely they will take you in anti cheating committee of Chesscom weird people who decide to leave open AI. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, back to our stats. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Let's keep moving along. So we, we of course have, um, we, we like, for example, if we look at. Okay, let's come back to the stats. So let's see. Hikaru is telling that uh, he has feed the classical difference because it's the highest possible, as I explained you already. So he takes like 350 points with his opponents and the probability of his result is 89%. Uh, well, <laughs> let's let's move on. Let's go. Uh, there is a Chesscom article. Well, to start with, it's a probability of one game. Let's say in one game, it's also not a probability of the result of one point. It's actually a probability of winning one single game in one each game. Yeah. It's also not 89, but 88 or something percent. Let's go. There was an article on chess.com. Uh, calculate your chance of winning. Actually, yeah, quite recently before this whole story started. And uh, they can, so uh, quite interesting article. You can read it. And uh, well, uh, there is a link here, which explain of the author. So it's published on chess.com officially. So I guess it's, yeah, it's uh, what they, believe in yeah and this is actually true it's pretty much true so now he's saying the following table shows the probability of beating an opponent listen carefully is based on the difference in rating points probability of winning a game so it is 100 percent. so the draw here is not counted it's about and you and you will uh, see it's about probability of what is your probability of winning uh, a game or yeah uh, so you will see uh, now let's go to the 350 points yeah so if you are below 350 points uh, it's below this is if you are ahead your probability of winning not scoring points winning 11 77 percent of winning a game and uh, from other point of view if you are ahead 350 then your probability is 88, 23%, not 89 anyways. So uh, now, I mean, I guess you have yeah, basic understanding, yeah, at least of mathematics, that this is what makes it uh, actually finally 100%, 88, 23 and 11, 77. So it means the draw is not counted there. 
the draw is not number one. So actually the um, the probability of you know in many games the probability of scoring a, a win, scoring a point, not a winning, but scoring a point. So it has a draw has to be added into it. So it is of course it is not anymore 88-23 because this is counted without a draw. But the most important, in fact, it was, I think, like 83% or something like that, yeah? But the most important, I mean, the main, such an obvious logical failure, I mean, I don't understand how anyone even, okay, I don't even talk about mathematicians, but, I mean, at least, even if you don't, you don't have a, a mathematical background, but it's quite obvious, it's like what he's saying, that in one game, the probability of him scoring one point, let's say, of winning is uh, actually this is a probability of winning against losing, yeah, uh, no, without draw, yeah. But okay, anyways, the uh, the main point is that uh, he pretends that actually this probability of winning so uh, is the same. So if he he wins one game, it is eighty eight according to him, which is also wrong. If he wins 10 games in a row, it's still 88. I mean, come on. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. This is simply ridiculous. I mean, he doesn't understand all the guys who prepared him. This They don't understand that actually the probability lowers. Yeah. I mean, it's in a way, it's this 88 of 88 of this 88, which already happened. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, to tell it in understandable language that, of course, then it would mean, according to his brilliant formula, that actually if probability of winning one game is 88, then it doesn't matter. It's exactly the same probability of, of winning 100 games in a row or one game in a row. I mean, this is a joke. This is just a joke. Of course, the probability starts to lower with each consecutive win. It starts to lower and lower. And actually, it gets much lower than, <laughs> to put it mildly, actually, it gets to lower than, than 0.1%, uh, I will tell you, uh, a little bit uh, going ahead of, of time, yeah? So, this is a joke. I mean, when they tell me, publish your because, pub, I mean, uh, uh, your statistics, of course, I'm ready. I mean, I have tons of mathematicians who are working on it. It's actually not a trivial thing to... Uh, to calculate very precisely the probability. But should I really talk uh, to the other side when they're telling this nonsense? This is nonsense simply. I mean, obvious nonsense. I don't even have to, you know, you can, I mean, everybody can understand. I'm sure 10 years old boy can understand this is nonsense. I mean, so uh, how can you take it seriously? After this, you know, how can I trust any of those brackets mathematicians or data scientists whoever prepared it this is just nonsense i guess you I, I, I was clear it is so obvious i mean that you understood why so okay this is the whole pri i mean after that there is no even point to look at, at this anymore at this statistics which will because this is like uh, i mean it's for for kids in kindergarten i mean already a school boy i mean like uh, 10 years old school boy, he should not swallow it because this is absurd, simply. Okay, then let's go uh, further. Okay. So, of course, it's not, I mean, this whole streak, 8904, it's just absurd. It is absurd. I mean, it's so much lower. I mean, one game, still not 89, but 83, I think, or 84, yes, one single game. But to win 45 games in a row, let's say, if you don't count draw, I mean, that's not, <laughs> not 84, uh, okay. I'm a scientist, I understand AI, I understand how computer engines work, and I'm gonna okay. be applying for a job at Microsoft in the yeah, AI yeah, department, yeah. along with those 700 weird people who decided okay. to leave open AI. In the meantime, back to our stats, um, let's keep moving along. So, we, we of course have, um, we, we, we 98.91, okay, because basically the four to five games where I was getting cooked, I mm -hmm. was able to win, and that's that. Oh, so, good. moving along, the game, next game after that win was against Legend is Back, the Turkish Kid, which I lost, of course. So I lost Yeah, no, Turkish now kid. he's telling also nonsense, which for statistics, so he's trying to take some more games from each side, and then explain that if you add them, include them, then the statistic is already not so unrealistic, even though it's still unrealistic. But uh, I will just explain you in a simple way. It's like we are investigating this, uh, what I already told about, this Chelsea Arsenal 7-0 victory 
you know, the, and then uh, when you are checking this, how, how likely is it? It's quite obviously not very likely. Uh, then uh, you come up and say, yeah, but wait, Chelsea lost uh, previous match 0-3 and then the, actually the next match after that, next one in the season, next season they also lost 0-2. So finally it is 7-5. No, 7-5 is normal. Yeah? I mean, what are you talking about? It actually is the fact that you lost, uh, uh, let's say, had a bad uh, performance before or after, it only actually diminishes the chances of this 7-0. But, I mean, you are not mixing the things, as I explained already. You are taking the biggest possible overperformance, and it doesn't matter what you did before and after. I mean, in, you, cannot come, you cannot just add it, you know, because this is the streak. We are analyzing this particular streak, which was overperformance. That's it. This streak happened. What happened before, if, if, it, uh, if you lost two games before, lost uh, three games after, it's another story. It's a matter of another test. So this is whole thing is just a manipulation. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to, to see what was before or after. There are a lot of nuances. I will explain you. There are a lot of nuances that, okay, if you look at the longer period of time, then what they are trying to do, uh, but that will be in my second part. We are getting close to the end of the first part. Uh, then you need to, to check how many streaks like that were. Yeah, but we are now talking about this particular, he talks about this particular streak, he took it because there were much more. But even we are playing now on the, totally on the field of him, he decides to take only one, he decides to, to use feed the OTB classical rating, please, still the probability is extremely low. If you are not, uh, you know, if you are using mathematics and not uh, this, this is uh, what just not this kindergarten full of logical fallacies okay kid in the next game um okay whatever next and game. Uh, again he, he goes games, very uh, very long explaining that he was worse in some games it's uh, if you won't listen to it but has no relation to this particular test uh you can ask mathematicians if you uh if you're not sure about what i say one, two, three. And then, of course, our three games against Legend is back, where I scored 91.96%. So I, I outperformed by 4% when you actually add in all the regular stats. I mean, again, it's, uh, you can listen to... I mean, it's all no, um, makes no sense, but if you want, you listen. You, you understand already, okay, when you're making a certain test and you make the totally wrong parameters which you want, and you are just doing it wrongly, not like statistics is done, then you will get to any result. He wants to get to some results. I'm not even interested. After this 88% uh, of probability of this streak, which is just a joke, yeah? I mean, uh, so it's really, I'm not interested anymore in, in whatever numbers uh, is this. And also I want to save your time and it's already a long video. So let's go to the point. If you want to uh, listen to it, but it just, it's not mathematics, I can tell you. So again, look mm -hmm. at this, 91% versus 87. So yes, 4%, both, both numbers 4 completely massive wrong. outlier over, over a handful of games. Um, okay, yeah. Chat is frozen. Okay, I'll, I'll worry about it later. Um, yeah, I think chat is already like so, you know, so uh, tired of this nonsense that it's got frozen. Yeah. But anyway, now we get to another point. But the mm -hmm. fact is, you get the point. The mm -hmm. point is, at the end of the day, Kramnik doesn't know what he's talking about. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not a data scientist. We all no, know. No, no, we, we see very clearly you're not a data scientist. I mean, uh, you're not ashamed, Hikaru. It's not a shame. I mean, to tell this nonsense, I mean, any mathematician, anyone, you know, like, who has a bit of knowledge will just laugh at it. I mean, laugh at it and you're, you know, you're accusing me that I don't know. Okay, I'm not a mathematician, but it seems I have... 10 times more understanding and knowledge of this than you. Yeah, I'm sorry. That I don't pretend to be mm -hmm. one. But the fact okay. that I can make a basic table like this. No, you cannot even to make a basic table. First of all, it was not you. Secondly, you don't understand anything. You make basic, basic primitive mistakes here. And that's a fact. And essentially show that the quote unquote mm -hmm. expert um, mm -hmm. or someone who's claiming to be the expert in like finding cheating and taking up the mantle and mm -hmm. all this doesn't know what he's talking about is a very, very bad sign. Because bad sign is to, to, uh, to tell what you tell. Yeah. I mean, because for any, okay, maybe for some fans, for some kids, you are a big hero and you, 
you also understand mathematics, but I'm sorry for any person who is a bit, uh, you know, who is a little bit at least capable of uh, making two plus two, he will just laugh at all this. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm obviously not, um, I'm not a data scientist. Whatever, let's uh, be uh, finishing it. I will now tell you uh, one, uh, I will just give you an experiment. You can watch this video. I mean, it's very difficult task actually to watch it till the end, but uh, I will give you very simple explanation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he decided to take it classical chess rating, whatever, 350 plus uh, difference in rating. Uh, 83, 87% he wants to score. Of course, it's complete nonsense, whatever. Now let's do very simple test. Everything open source. Let's see uh, what should be the, per, uh, what uh, kind of rating uh, feed the ELO rating because he's taking ELO, yeah, now. Okay, let's take ELO. I mean, chess.com, I calculated already. It was 23,600 uh, something. I mean, totally crazy. Like 400 uh, chess.com rating, you know, over performance. Uh, but you want FIDE? Okay, let's go. Let's take FIDE. There is a site. There is a uh, here. Rating performance calculator. It's official. Yeah, you can check with ELO. So I took 24,21 rating. Uh, which was the average of his opponent. I put, you see here, I put 45 and a half out of 46 here, and uh, it gives you the yeah rating performance and so on. Yeah, it gives you the performance. So the performance, I hope you see it's 3098 FIDE. Okay, you wanted Hikaru, you wanted FIDE rating. That is FIDE rating, 3098. Um, so uh, let's check now the rating of uh, Hikaru at that time. I think it was, uh, it didn't play actually any single OTB Blitz games. It was 2874. So the, I wrote it here. So the overperformance still is uh, quite significant by FIDE, by FIDE rating is 224 points of ELO rating. I mean, unsinkable also still unsinkable okay because there is a little different system is more uh, let's say more mobile the chesscom system so uh, actually it more or less corresponds in fact 224 and this like 400 plus uh, performance in chesscom so it's it's the same it's still unsinkable it's crazy over performance to show you why maybe you will not believe that this is crazy you know i tell you I will show you very simple. Uh, Magnus best OTB performances uh, ever, as I understand ever. I mean, there were two events. One, one he wins all the time world championships, and um, he also, I mean, uh, like every year. But I choose the best one. I think his best performance was in 2022. He won having 16 out of 21. I mean, crazy score. Uh, by the way, Hikaru had 15 out of 21, also good, but I mean, not as good as Hikaru, as uh, Magnus. And then what's very famous tournament in Zagreb, yeah, when uh, also he started like 11 out of 11 and finally finished like 15 out of 18, I think. I mean, absolutely with a fantastic feel, like best players in the world. Let's see. Let's go. Let's go. So the performance in Zagreb, I mean, maybe best ever Blitz OTB. Crushing everyone, very strong field. Caruana, Duda, Gukesh, Anand, Nipomnishi, Firuja, etc. Car uh, yeah, etc. etc. Uh, 15 out of 18, crazy. Performance 29.96. Still, Hikaru, I'm sorry, we are now talking about feed, still more than 100 point performance feed, ELO performance, and in feed, 100 points is a lot. Still 100 points lower than your performance here. I mean, best ever probably uh, OTB tournament somebody played. Not enough. Okay, let's go. Let's check the World Championship. Now, the FIDE, this uh, Blitz World Championship, Magnus won convincingly. Also, as I mentioned already, 16 out of 21. I mean, crazy performance, Qu crazy result. What is the performance? Performance rating 2904. Almost 200 lower than your performance, Hikaru. So, 
what are we talking? You are telling me that I'm taking some kind of statistics that this is not an anomaly when the best probably ever play, player, uh, you know, in history of chess playing the, his best ever blitz events. His, he, his performance is 100 or 200 lower than this performance. And you, I mean, you believe that nobody should have any kind of uh, razor elbows. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, taking this uh, system which you yourself took, in fact, according to Chesscom system, even higher, even higher is a difference. So uh, you see now, okay, I mean, I'm sorry, but uh, that was the first part. I think it was long enough. You will, you will see a lot of things like that already, but I, I mean, in my opinion, it's very obvious situation. Yeah, you, you will see clearly who is lying, who is who is telling the truth, who is manipulating, who is uh, telling, you know, the correct numbers. Uh, but uh, for now, I will leave you with, with this. Uh, uh, I, I hope that, uh, I mean, that you, uh, I, that you don't have the limited attention span as it's written here and uh, that you understood what I said. I mean, you can always write, ask uh, some questions in your uh, in comments. I'm sorry, I'm going to delete because as a part of this uh, PR campaign, there are a lot of bots, people, I don't know, who are, who are just telling nonsense, lies, insults, instead of actually uh, understandably discussing the point because the po they don't want to discuss the point. I mean, they have no, no real arguments. So they come to, to all this uh, insult. So I'm, I'm going to, uh, to delete all this. I mean, when it's just obvious, vulgar insults, disinformation and so on. I don't, I'm not going to let uh, those people uh, you know, do this trick of uh, disinformation uh, or switching the attention, trying again distraction. Yeah, you see manipulation methods, of, uh, uh, types of distraction, trying to to move public's opinion to another uh, to another subject. Okay, am I crazy or not or whatever? Uh, I think you see that I'm not. But uh, you know, please, I want everyone to discuss this point if the mathematicians i, I mean a, a, a real ones not fake uh yeah if there is they have something to say concretely about uh, the methods and the numbers uh yes uh, welcome but uh well i uh, well i have my doubts they will uh, say something different because those things which i explained they are not even high mathematics this is very simple mathematics i mean i have a team which is I mean, much higher level than that. Yeah, but this is really basic. Anyways, I hope it was interesting for you. The part one is over for today. Uh, soon I will record a second, maybe third part of it. So follow the serial, the, you know, maybe the most interesting one after the Queen's Gambit. How, how should I call it? Maybe uh, Queen's Drama Attack, something like this. Yeah. Uh, okay. See you soon. Uh, all the best. Thank you for your attention.